So now that we have the domain name of the question, we can get the records because we can load the zone file because we know the domain name. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called get recs. And we're going to pass it the variable data. And it's going to be the same variable as above. Then what we're actually going to do is just delete this. And we're going to come up here and create get recs. We're going to pass it a variable called data. And then in here, we're going to say domain comma question type is equal to the return value of get question domain. And we just want to pass it the entire data variable. Then what we want to do is we want to say if question type is equal to slash x00 slash x01, which means the two bytes that make up the question type are equal to one. Then we're going to say QT is equal to A because if we go back to Wireshark, you can see that when the question is of type A, it is encoded as a one. So we're going to just create the variable QT up here. So now that we know the question type, which means we know what records to look for, we can retrieve them from the zone. So we can say zone is equal to get zone domain. And we're going to pass domain to a new, a new function we're going to create called get zone. And before we do that, what we want to do is we want to scroll up to the top and we want to create a global variable called zone data. And it's going to be equal to the output of load zones, which is another function we're going to create now. So load zones. is going to be a function that loads all of the zones that we have under our control whenever the DNS server is started up. Because it'll load them into memory, then we can retrieve them from memory whenever we need them, and it's good for performance reasons because we're not doing as much file I.O. So we're going to create a variable called zone files, and we're going to get our zone files from the folder zones. So we need to import a library called glob, and we want to say zone files is equal to glob.glob, .glob, and then here we just want to pass it zones slash a star dot zone, which means we want to look in the zones folder for every file that ends in dot zone. And zone files, if we print it out, uh, we can't run this yet because we have an undefined function. We have uh, get zone isn't defined yet, so we want to go up here and just define get zone, and then just say pass. This just allows us to define the function without actually giving it a method body. So if we just run this, put in our password. Load zone is not defined. Okay, I call it load zones, so I'll just call it load zones. You can see it printed out a list containing one zone file. So what we want to do is we want to take all of the zone files and we want to read the file and load it into our program. So we want to say for zone in zone files, and then we want to say with open zone as zone data. So now we have the data stored in zone data. We want to create a variable called data and we want to set, set it equal to json.load zone data. And then up here we want to include the json library too. Because all of our zones use json, so we're loading the json and storing it in a variable called data. And what we want to do is come up here and create a variable called json zone and we set that equal to an empty dictionary. And then here what we want to say is json zone We'll pass it a key and we'll set it equal to data. And the key we're going to pass it is just going to be something like zone name. And we're going to get zone name from data origin. And if we go back to the zone file, you can see the origin contains the domain name with an extra dot on the end of it. And then here we just want to return JSON zone. So now that we have all of our zones loaded into our program, we can say global zone data which gives us access to the zone data and we want to get the domain name obviously uh, into the function. So now that we have the zone data we can get the data from a specific zone because we have all the zones loaded and we have the domain name that we want to look at. So we want to say zone underscore name is equal to and uh, we want to join our list together so we're going to say uh, join the list on dots and we're going to say dot join domain and then we're going to append on a dot on the end of it because all of our origins also have a dot on the end of them. And then we want to say return zone data zone name. So this will load all of the zone data and then it will return it to us when we run the get zone function. So now we have the zone stored in the zone variable. And what we want to do is return a tuple equal to zone QT for question type followed by the domain name itself. So if I print out get rex, hopefully we'll get the entire zone file of howcode.org printed out to us. Okay, so there's a syntax error there. Uh, let's just fix that. So up here, we just have to set that to an equals. 
Uh, let's run this. Okay, so the reason we got this weird error is because we accidentally put in the x plus one twice. So we actually just need to delete this and let's just run this again. You can see that almost fixed it. We just have this backslash x in it as well. And we can easily fix that just by saying if byte doesn't equal zero, then we'll append it onto that string. So let's just run this. And we just have an extra dot. So we can just scroll up here. So we can just get rid of the dot. And we'll delete that print as well. So let's just try this one more time. So we have another typo, just QT instead of AT. Okay, so here we have exactly what we wanted. We have the zone file printed out and it's stored inside of a dictionary. And finally, we just want to change this. So instead of returning the entire zone, we just want to return the records that are relevant to this request. So we want to return zone and then we put in QT to get just the air records. Let's run this one more time. We get an error because for some reason QT isn't being set. But if we scroll up here, the reason was because when we fixed this function earlier, we just need to change this to Y and Y plus two. Uh, let's just try that again. Now we should have the correct question type. And as you can see, what it did was it returned all of the air records in JSON format. And now what we can do is we can finally print out the answer count. So we can get the answer count by saying len to get the length of the, uh, first off it's getting the length of this tuple, but we want to get the length of the first element of the tuple. So we can put in a zero to get the first element of the tuple. So we just put in a zero in here. So you can see now we get three printed out. If I go to the zone file, and I just paste in something, uh, another record. We have four A records now. If I run this again, we get four printed out. So the answer count is going to be equal to, an count is gonna be equal to the number of records, but then what we wanna do is say dot two bytes, but to convert it to bytes, but then what we'll say is convert it to two bytes, and then we'll say byte order equals big. Then we'll just print out answer count. and we have a syntax error. Okay, so we just have an extra parenthesis there. Let's just run this again. And you can see we get four printed out. We have two bytes and they equal four. So there's our answer count done. The next part of the header we have to do is the name server count. So name server count. And we're just gonna make this zero. It's gonna be equal to zero dot two bytes two, and then we'll just do the same thing again, byte order equals big. And then finally, we'll just copy this and do it one more time for the additional section. And then that should be all of our headers done. Do the additional section. And that should be it. Just do AR count. And then finally, we can just say DNS header is equal to transaction ID. We don't actually need the uh, this part actually, we can just get rid of that. Transaction ID plus the flags, these have to be in the correct order. As you can see, they're in the same order as they would be in the normal just DNS response. Uh, so we have the transaction ID, the flags, plus the QD count, plus the answer count, plus the name server count, plus the AR count. And let's just print this. And we get the DNS header printed out. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.